for the headlines. Weather forecast. The heat index forecast in Metro Manila and two other regions is expected to reach a dangerous level at 46 degrees Celsius. In local news, Elected officials engaging in EPAL moves are yet to face a scrutiny from the COMELEC. The ban on corrupt police officers has sparked mixed reactions in North Main. The fight against labor-only contracting continues to be waged by the FFW. Three municipalities in Bukidnon have declared a state of calamity due to the effects of El Nino. National News According to SWS, 46% of Filipino households perceive themselves as poor. A Philippine court halts the production of GMO golden rice due to safety concerns. A soft drinks tycoon in Vietnam has been sentenced to jail in a $40 million scam case by a court. Entertainment Angeline Quinto and her non-showbiz boyfriend Nonrev Dakina have tied the knot. Julia Barreto heads to Jakarta for the premiere of Secret Ingredient. USC secures the final final four spot in UAP Junior High School Basketball. NBA, the hit barrage of three-pointer surprises the Celtics, evening the playoff series. International Feature Multiple award nominations are received by Filipinos on Broadway. National Feature Mega World plans to construct a museum in Mactan, Cebu. And Trivia, Belenoptera musculus, commonly known as the Blue Whale. Good morning Philippines! Magandang umaga Luzon o Mayo Adlao, Visayas o Mindanao. I am Athalia P. Sanyel. Weather forecast. The heat index forecast in Metro Manila and two other regions is expected to reach a dangerous level at 46 degrees Celsius. The Philippine Atmospheric, Geophysical, and Astronomical Services Administration issued a warning about a danger heat index of 46 degrees Celsius in Metro Manila, Cavite, and Pangasinan until Friday. Forecaster Altazar Aurelio noted that Nueva Ecija and Olongapo City might experience a heat index of 45 degrees Celsius, while other areas could reach 40 degrees Celsius to 44 degrees Celsius. Pag-asa advises precautionary measures as elevated temperatures can lead to heat-related illnesses. Aurelio also mentioned the influence of easterlies and the intertropical convergence zone causing isolated rain showers and thunderstorms. Despite this, fair weather with clear skies expected until weekend. Pag-as advises limiting outdoor activities especially from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m and staying hydrated to prevent dehydration. Local News Elected officials engaging in EPAL moves are yet to face scrutiny from the COMELEC. No election laws have been violated by City Mayor Rolando Clarix Uy's recent presentation to some active city councillors and relatives believed to replace the last term members of the city council in the 2025 elections. This was clarified by Misamis Oriental Provincial Election Supervisor Attorney Carlito Ravello following the mayor's activities in various barangays in recent weeks. Ravello stated that while political activities by politicians are not yet within the election period, the Comelec lacks authority to intervene. However, he urged other government agencies to take action if any guidelines that elected public officials should always follow are openly breached. The ban on corrupt police officers has sparked mixed reactions in North Min. It is imperative for the police to consistently serve as examples to the people they serve. This is a message of support from DILG 10 regarding the policy from Camp Crane instructing police officers to refrain from displaying tattoos on their bodies. 
Edward Baguani, Special Assistant to the DILG-10 Regional Director, emphasized that this long-standing government policy has only been reaffirmed by current PNP officials. Baguani further stressed the importance of all public servants displaying discipline and setting an example to encourage respect for authority. However, the memorandum circ circular prohibiting police officers from displaying tattoos has faced strong opposition. Notably from Bukidnon District 2, Congressman Jonathan Flores, who argues that tattoos do not determine a person's character and should not be a basis for such a policy. Previously, police officers with tattoos were given three months to have them removed to avoid facing administrative penalties as outlined in the directive. The fight against labor-only contracting continues to be waged by the FFW. The Federation of Free Workers remains steadfast in its opposition to the complete eradication of labor-only contracting within the private sector workforce in the country. This sentiment coincides with the government's acknowledgement of the significant role of workers as the nation prepares to celebrate Labor Day on May 1 this year, marking its 122nd anniversary. FFW Legal Counsel Attorney Proculo Sarmen emphasizes the need to provide fair and human protection to workers to effectively contribute to the nation's economic growth. Conversely, it is not only vital but imperative for workers themselves to play a pivotal role in ensuring productivity for the nation's economy. This sentiment is echoed by Attorney Russell Halorina, Assistant Regional Director of Dole 10, who stresses the importance of recognizing the significant contributions of both public and private sector workers. Halorina emphasizes that Labor Day should not just be commemorated. Halorina emphasizes that Labor Day should not just be commemorated, but workers themselves should be celebrated as the driving force behind an economy, underscoring the necessity of ensuring job security and appropriate benefits. Three municipalities in Bukidnon have declared a state of calamity due to the effects of El Nino. The municipalities of Kibawe, Quezon, and Kitautau in Bukidnon province have been officially declared under a state of calamity due to the impacts of the El Nino phenomenon. This declaration stems from the effects on their water sources and agricultural conditions. Gilbert Conde, Assistant Regional Director of the Office of Civil Defense 10, urged other agencies such as the Department of Agriculture to take necessary steps to aid the affected communities. However, each municipality has limited access to calamity funds, which may not suffice due to the budget constraints.
national news. According to SWS, 46% of Filipino households perceive themselves as poor. According to a survey conducted by the social weather stations and released on Tuesday, nearly half of Filipino families perceive themselves as poor. The poll conducted from March 21 to 25 found that 46% of Filipino households consider themselves poor, amounting to approximately 13 million families. The percentage of self-rated poor families remained relatively unchanged compared to December 2023. The Visayas reported the highest self-rated poverty rate at 64%, followed by Mindanao at 56%, areas outside the capital region at 38%, and Metro Manila at 33%. Additionally, 30% of families classified themselves as borderline poor, while 23% did not consider themselves poor. The survey, which included face-to-face -face interviews with 1,500 adults, had a sampling error margin of 2.5% for, for national percentages. A Philippine court halts the production of GMO golden rice due to safety concerns. A Philippine court has halted the commercial cultivation of genetically modified golden rice due to concerns over conflicting scientific opinions regarding its health and environmental impacts. The Court of Appeals in Manila revoked the biosafety permit for commercial production of golden rice, which contains beta-carotene to address childhood blindness, following a challenge by 14 opponents. The court's decision issued on April 17 also applies to BT eggplant, a pest-resistant genetically modified crop. The ruling prohibits commercial propagation until government agencies provide proof of safety and compliance with the legal requirements. While experts hope golden rice will alleviate childhood blindness, environmental groups of opponents of genetically modified crops welcome the court's decision, emphasizing the need for ecological agriculture. International news. A soft drinks tycoon in Vietnam has been sentenced to jail in a $40 million scam case by a court. Vietnam's leading soft drinks mag magnate was sentenced to eight years in prison on Thursday in a $40 million fraud case, marking another prominent business figure in snared, ensnared. Marking another prominent business figure ensnared in the country's extensive anti-corruption campaign. Tran Ki Tan, chairman of Tan Yat Fat Beverage Group, along with his two daughters, were found guilty by a court in Ho Chi Minh City of deceiving investors regarding loans issued in 2019 and 2020. Despite borrowers repaying the loans with interest, Tan refused to return the assets used as collateral, citing various excuses. His 43-year-old daughter Tran Uyen Pung received a four-year jail term, while his 40-year-old daughter, Tran Ngoc Beach, was given a suspended three-year sentence. Tan Yep Fat is renowned for its bottled tea and energy drinks and is among Vietnam's largest beverage companies. Numerous successful business leaders in Vietnam have faced prosecution as part of the government's anti-corruption efforts including a recent case involving property tycoon Trung Mai Lan, who was sentenced to death for orchestrating a massive swindle resulting in substantial losses. Similarly, luxury property tycoon Do An Dung received an eight-year prison sentence for his involvement in a $355 million bond scam. Entertainment. Angeline Quinto and her non-showbiz boyfriend, non-rev Dakina, have tied the knot. OPM artist Angeline Quinto exchanged vows with her non-showbiz partner, non-rev Dakina, on Thursday at Quiapo Church in Manila, accompanied by their son, Silvio. The wedding party included Vice Ganda as a man of honor, Eric Santos as a ring bearer, 
and Sarah Geronimo as the Flower Girl. Among the notable sponsors were Manila Mayor Honey Lacuna, Charo Santos Concho, Boya Bunda, Martin Yevera, Regine Velasquez, Lorente Jogi, Cory Vidanes, Vicky Bello, and Shaja Padilla. Father Rufino Jun Sescon Jr. officiated the ceremony, which will be followed by a reception at Manila Hotel. Nakina and Quinto welcomed Silvia in April 2022 and got engaged in September of the same year. Silvio's name honors Quinto's late adoptive mother, Silvia Quinto, affectionately known as Mama Bob. Julia Barreto heads to Jakarta for the premiere of Secret Ingredient. Julia Barreto expresses her excitement for her upcoming international series Secret Ingredient as she heads to Jakarta, Indonesia for its premiere. This culinary-centric series featuring three diverse cultures is set to stream starting April 30th on VIEW Philippines and VIEW Indonesia. Barreto eagerly anticipates viewers experiencing the love-filled journey filled with delectable cuisine from Korea, Indonesia, and the Philippines. She shares her gratitude for the opportunity to work on the series and highlights the enjoyable experience collaborating with the cast and crew. Sports. USD secures a final final four spot in UAP Junior High School Basketball. University of Santo Tomas clinched a spot in the UAAP Season 86 Junior High School Boys Basketball Final Four with an 87-82 victory over De La Salle Zobel at Amoranto Arena in Quezon City. And while Cabanero's remarkable performance in the third quarter, where he scored 16 of his 34 points, fueled USA's rally and secured their lead. Despite a late surge from the LSZ, USC maintained their advantage with Guillaume de la Cruz sealing the win with clutch free throws. USC will now face National University Nazareth School in the semi finals, while Far Eastern University Diliman battles University of the East in the other bracket. NBA The Heat's barrage of three pointers surprises the Celtics, evening the playoff series. The Miami Heat leveled the NBA Eastern Conference playoff series with a 111 to 101 victory over the Boston Celtics, fueled by a, a range of three pointers. Despite playing without the injured Jimmy Butler, the Heat showcased a balanced offensive effort, with Tyler Harrow leading the scoring with 24 points. The Heat's accuracy from beyond the arc, draining 23. Three pointers compared to Boston's 12 proved decisive. Jalen Brown led Boston with 33 points in a losing effort. Miami's strong response in Game 2 following a heavy defeat in Game 1 reflected their determination to compete. Meanwhile, in the Western Conference, the top-seeded Oklahoma City Thunder secured a commanding 124-92 win over the New Orleans Pelicans, taking a 2-0 series lead. Shai Gilogos Alexander led the Thunder with 33 points, supported by Shet Holmgren's 26 points. The Thunder dominated throughout, maintaining a double-digit lead from the second quarter onwards. The series now moves to Game 3 in the New Orleans on Saturday. International Feature Multiple award nominations are received by Filipino on Broadway. Theater award nominations have been unveiled, recognizing Filipino Americans both on and off Broadway for their astounding contributions. The prestigious 2024 Drama League Awards nominations include the first all Filipino cast musical Here Lies Love, with nods for outstanding revival of a musical, with nods for outstanding revival of a musical. Outstanding Direction of a Musical for Alex Timbers and a Distinguished Performance Award for Conrad Ricamora. Ricamora also earns a nomination for O oh Mary alongside Eva Noblezada, who is recognized for her performance in The Great Gatsby. Additionally, Here Lies Love garners two nominations for the 2024 Outer's 
Critics Circle Awards. Winners will be announced in May for both ceremonies. National Feature Mega World Plans to Construct a Museum in Mactan, Cebu Mega World Leading Property Developer announced plans to construct the Mactan World Museum in Cebu's Mactan New Town Township, aiming to recount the historical narrative of Ferdinand Magellan's encounter with the Pulapu and the Manila Galleon trade. The museum will showcase collections, artifacts, and interactive displays on significant events between the Philippines and Spain, offering visitors an immersive experience of the Spanish colonial era. Additionally, it will feature performance halls for Spanish dances, multimedia exhibits, and activities rooted in Filipino-Spanish culture. Created by Danny Alvarez, the museum is set to become Mega World's fourth museum property and is expected to open within the next three years. Trivia Balenoptera musculus, commonly known as a blue whale. The blue whale holds the title of the largest animal by weight, with specimens reaching up to 160 tons and averaging 24 meters in length. However, the longest animal on record is a bootlace worm. A notable specimen of a blue whale caught in the Southern Ocean in 1947 weigh an astonishing 190 tons and measured 27.6 meters in length. Newborn blue whale calves typically measure 6 to 8 meters long and weigh up to 3 tons. The remarkable growth of a female blue whale from a tiny ovum to around 26 tons in just under 23 months in an astonishing feat, representing a threefold increase in weight. And that was the information we got from here and abroad. Keep listening and watching. Please subscribe, follow, like, and share Pinoy Rob on YouTube channel. And thank you very much for watching Pinoy Rob News channel, Tadiyan Di Oro. I request again to support and subscribe and turn on notifications for more updates and more info. Again, thank you very much and have a wonderful day.